I detest audiences, not in their individual components, but en masse I detest audiences. I think they're a force of evil, if I may once again revert to moral judgment. Um, I, I, I cannot understand really anyone who does respond to them. I know such people exist. I know Arthur Rubinstein, to name but one example, does respond in this way to an audience. Um, and uh, I, I admit it as a historical curiosity that, it is, that this was one way in which uh, performers divine some form of, of inspiration which made them go and do, and that's all to the good, I suppose, as long as he can go and do. I have to admit that that's fine. But um, I find it a very chilling fact. It seems to me the rule of mob law. However, many people seem to like the rule of mob law. There's been a proliferation of symphony orchestras in the New World and in the Old, records notwithstanding. But for Glenn Gould, the concert circuit has no charms whatsoever. I really thank God that I'm able to sit in the studio with enormous concentration and enjoyment, doing things many times if necessary, which isn't always, um, but doing things many times and taking what is more important, a view of the work that I'm recording, which lets me in on the composing secrets of the work, really. There have been many occasions when I've recorded something and have come into this studio at 10 o'clock, on a Monday morning and really been in 16, not just two different minds, but 16 different minds as to how it should go. Um, and this sense of option is, is really quite a marvelous luxury. It's a luxury that you cannot permit yourself in the concert hall. You simply cannot. You would be dead if you walked on stage not being quite certain. But in fact, what happens is that by, by one o'clock in the afternoon, having given it three hours of work, I may not have come to any definitive conclusions, but I will finally have selected one of these options and made it my priority and out of this created a viable performance um, the work has then only begun in fact because i spend a great many hours sitting in playback booths listening and listening and listening until somehow the priorities assert themselves absolutely and i become convinced if i don't become convinced we simply schedule another session and come back and do it all over again and this has nothing whatever to do with with finger falls it has nothing whatever to do with with um, questions of, of manual dexterity. What I'm talking about here is a sense of the line of the work, the, the sense of, of its architectural projection. I, I think that, that uh, a whole new role of the interpreter has, um, has been opened by recording in this way. I think he's out of his mind. I couldn't, I couldn't perform if there was not three people sitting out there. I couldn't do that. I think, I think every performer needs this stimulus. That's why I'm not very comfortable in recording studios, which Mr. Gould is. Mr. Gould is, uh, he, he absolutely is not, uh, he loses all his uh, inhibition in front of uh, the camera or the, or the, or the microphone. We, we, most of us are not like that. We, not only do we need the stimulus, but we need somebody to receive what we are doing, you know. It can be somebody that we don't know. There has to be somebody who is receiving from us. This is very important, I think, to anybody that steps foot on the stage to have this contact. And to step foot on the stage in a recording studio without the contact to give the utmost, this is for me at least very difficult.